Hey everyone, this lesson is on the blood condition known as proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, or PNH. So what is proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria? It is an acquired hematological or blood condition that affects hematopoietic stem cells. So a couple of key points to note here. It's acquired, so it's not inherited. It's a blood condition that affects the hematopoietic stem cells, the stem cells that make other blood cells, like red blood cells and white blood cells. It's caused by a deficiency of pyga. And this deficiency of pyga protein is due to a pyga gene mutation within a stem cell in the bone marrow. So pyga gene mutation occurs. It's an acquired mutation that leads to a deficiency of pyga. And what is pyga? So pyga is actually a anchor protein on red blood cells. And what happens here is that, I won't go into all the details, but pyga allows the red blood cell to repel complement. So complement, if it does attach and becomes activated, it can hemolyze, it can destroy this red blood cell. So this pyga protein, this pyga anchor protein repels, it prevents complement activation. So if we lose this pyga protein, we have a deficiency of it. This leads to abnormal complement activation on red blood cell membranes and leads to subsequent destruction of those red blood cells or hemolysis, destruction of blood cells. Now, what is the epidemiology of PNH? PNH is a very rare condition. It is estimated that one to 10 per million people are affected by this condition. And it has an onset in the third to fourth decade of life. And it is associated with aplastic anemia. This is the only risk factor that seems to be associated with PNH. We'll talk a bit more about aplastic anemia later on in this lesson. Now, you might be wondering why this condition is called proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. So the word proxismal means that it occurs irregularly and oftentimes suddenly. So these episodes, we'll talk a bit more in detail here soon, but these episodes that occur in this condition occur irregularly. And nocturnal, the word nocturnal means that the episodes often occur at nighttime. And we can see this due to hypoxemia. So we see complement activation more so at night due to hypoxemia. And we see destruction or hemolysis of those red blood cells. And then hemoglobinuria, so hemoglobin, so hemoglobin, urea, so hemoglobin in the urine, we start to see red to pink urine coloration. So we see episodes that occur irregularly, oftentimes at night or early morning hours, and then we see red, pink urine coloration. So more specifically with regards to proximal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, we see hemolytic anemia. Because we see complement activation, because there's a deficiency of pyga, we see these red blood cells being hemolyzed or destroyed. This leads to a normochromic normocytic anemia. So when you look under a microscope, the cells are normal shaped. They're not too big or too small. They're in the normal range. So we see anemia, low hemoglobin, and we see a normal mean corpuscular volume, MCV. This means that it is normocytic. So anemia, normocytic, so it's a normocytic anemia, but then when you look at the hemolytic panel, so we look at things like reticulocyte count, these are immature red blood cells, they're increased because your bone marrow is trying to make more blood cells or more red blood cells, so you start to see increased reticulocytes. We see increased LDH because when these red blood cells are destroyed, they dump out a lot of lactate dehydrogenase or LDH into the blood, so we can see increased LDH. We also see increased bilirubin. Bilirubin is a breakdown product of hemoglobin because, again, we're getting a lot of breakdown of red blood cells. We get breakdown of the hemoglobin. We see increased bilirubin. And then we also see decreased free haptoglobin. Now, haptoglobin binds to hemoglobin. So if there's a lot of hemoglobin around because red blood cells are being destroyed, we have less free haptoglobin. There's less haptoglobin that is not bound to hemoglobin. So we see decreased free haptoglobin. And this leads to a chronic intravascular hemolysis. So this is a key portion or a key factor of proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. And because we see increased bilirubin, we see jaundice as well. And here's an image of scleral icterus. So jaundice in the whites of the eyes can be one of the first signs of jaundice. 
Now, we also see bone marrow suppression. So this leads to pancytopenia. Pancytopenia, pan meaning all, cyto cells, and penia or enia means decreased levels. So all cells are decreased because we lose our ability to make red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets, we see all those cell types being low in quantity. And another important aspect of proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria that is not often recognized is an increased risk of arterial and venous thrombi. So thrombi are clots that form. So clots in arteries and veins. So this is very important to recognize. This is due to complement activation. So because there's so much complement activation on red blood cells, we actually see increased production of clots in both arteries and veins. So this is very important, again, to recognize. And we can see abdominal and or cerebral veins being affected. So we can get clots in abdominal veins and cerebral veins. So very important, again, to recognize this. Now, some other clinical features of PNH include hemoglobinuria. We talked about this before, this red-pink coloration of the urine. This is more likely to occur in the morning hours. So an individual, when they wake up and they see their urine first thing in the morning, it looks more red, it looks more pink in coloration. And then as the day goes on, it clears up. And then again, it'll occur uh, overnight and we see this again. We can also see fatigue, and this can often be severe fatigue in PNH. Dyspnea, so shortness of breath can also occur. We can see abdominal pain and chest pain in this condition. Headaches can be something that can occur as well in PNH. And then we can also see something with regards to vascular nitric oxide. And actually, vascular nitric oxide can become depleted in PNH. This leads to increased smooth muscle tone and can lead to issues like dysphagia, problem swallowing, and even erectile dysfunction. Renal insufficiency and in pulmonary hypertension can also occur, and this is often due to or likely due to prolonged free hemoglobin in the blood. So this can lead to these types of complications. And then PNH may transform into other types of blood conditions like aplastic anemia, myelodysplasia, myelofibrosis, and acute leukemia. So it is a risk factor for getting these other conditions. And we talked about aplastic anemia being one of those blood conditions that is associated with PNH. So a, having aplastic anemia, more likely to have PNH. And then if you have PNH, it may transform into aplastic anemia. So these are the blood conditions that PNH could transform into. So how is PNH diagnosed and treated? So the diagnosis of proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, oftentimes when looking at a blood result, it is a normocytic anemia. It's a hemolytic anemia. So doing a hemolytic panel shows that we see increased LDH, increased bilirubin, increased reticulocyte count, and decreased free haptoglobin. So you see evidence of hemolysis. And then if a clinician does a Coombs test, it's negative. And then if urine is checked, it can be positive for hemoglobin or hemosiderin. But what I really want you to take away here is that flow cytometry is the way that proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is diagnosed. So flow cytometry shows that PNH has CD59 and CD55 negative cells. So CD59 and CD55 negative cells is the key here in making the diagnosis of PNH. Now the way clinicians may treat proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria may include hematopoietic cell transplantation, so a stem cell transplant. But what, again, I want you to really remember here is eculizumab is the treatment for PNH. And then anticoagulation is also very important because of that increased risk of arterial and venous thrombi being produced in this condition. So again, with regards to the diagnosis and treatment of proxismal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, flow cytometry is key here, showing CD59 and CD55 negative cells. And then treatment, eculizumab and anticoagulation. So anticoagulation for that risk of arterial and venous thrombi being formed. So if you want to learn more about other hematological or blood conditions, please check out my playlist on those topics. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.